everyone. I'm here in Roswell, Georgia, just outside of Alpharetta, Georgia, and I'm here to see the grave of one of the most underrated wrestlers that's ever came through the WWE slash WWF as well as WCW, and that's the grave of the ravishing Rick Rude. Rick Rude was possibly one of the most technical wrestlers that's ever stepped foot in the ring. Uh, Rick Rude was childhood best friends with Kurt Henning, uh, also known as Mr. Perfect. He also managed uh, and was a member of Degeneration X, which included China, X Pac, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H. Uh, he had some of the biggest rivals with some of the WWE's top names, uh, which included um, Jake the Snake Roberts and the Ultimate Warrior. As well as wrestling in the WWE, he developed a, a strong friendship with Bret the Hitman Hart. Unfortunately, Rick died in 1999. Uh, he was found by his wife, Michelle, uh, who will later be buried here uh, once she passes. Uh, she's got a, a, a mausoleum right next to him, uh, or a, uh, a burial place right next to him. Um, but he died in 1999. His wife found him, his wife Michelle, uh, and after a uh, autopsy, it was found that he had died of a drug overdose. Uh, the initial uh, conclusion was heart failure. That heart failure was related to his drug overdose. Now, during the time that he was wrestling, which was the early 80s throughout the 90s, most of the wrestlers were uh, taking a, a cocktail of uh, all kinds of stuff, including uh, pain pills as well as steroids. Um, but that doesn't take away with what Rick Rude has done for the wrestling community. Uh, so follow me. We're going to check, check out his, his grave. Um, as well as walk around. There's a couple. There's a bench dedicated to him. Looks like from his children. Uh, and we're just going to check the area out. Before we look at the mausoleum with uh, of Rick Rude and his final resting place, notice here that there is a um, a bench dedicated to Rick Rude. It says our loving daddy Rick Rude, and uh, it's in the corner of the mausoleum. And right here you'll see a, a newer WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt. Uh, this is like one of the newest ones uh, post the John Cena spinning belt. Um, when Rick wrestled, he was in the WWF. But most of us know that that later changed to the WWE because of a lawsuit from the World or the Wildlife Federation. Um, so there's the tree right here. Over here is the final resting place of Rick Rude. Uh, you'll notice um, this is kind of new to me whenever I was looking up his uh, his uh, final resting place is Rick spells his name, his birth name, different than his ring name. Uh, Rick, R-O-O-D. Um, any fans of Rick Rude would know that in the ring he spells it R-U-D-E. And that also goes into his persona of being this cocky, arrogant, um, muscle, muscle dude, just super in shape. Um, honestly, probably one of the most athletic looking wrestlers of his time, next to um, Mr. Wonderful, uh, the Ultimate Warrior, and the Von Eriks. But Rick Rude really played into his look. That was a part of his persona. Uh, a lot of people, mainly men, hated Rick Rude, uh, but he attracted a lot of female fans to the wrestling business. 
and women love to watch Rick Rude's entrance. Like I said, uh, Rick Rude was possibly one of the greatest, uh, most technical wrestlers that's ever stepped foot in the ring. Um, he also had a a um, a way with speaking in the ring. Uh, he's very charismatic once he got on the microphone. Um, unfortunately, uh, he had his wrestling career cut short. Uh, now, like I said, his name is spelled a little bit different. Um, he was born in Minnesota in 1958. Um, he went to Robbinsdale High School. Uh, that's where he met his good friend, Kurt Henning, uh, also known as Mr. Perfect. After he graduated, he got a degree in physical education at a small community college. He never really used his degree, but obviously earning a degree in physical education probably helped him out with working on his appearance in his later career uh, of wrestling. But after graduating, he eventually became a professional arm wrestler. After becoming a professional arm wrestler, he saw that professional wrestling was an opportunity for him. He made his debut at the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling in 1982. Uh, then he would go on to spend time in promotions such as the Georgia Championship Wrestling, which we know that the Nature Boy Ric Flair uh, wrestled in quite a bit um, and then he would go on to wrestle in uh, the Memphis promotions uh, that's where he spent a lot of his uh, amateur wrestling uh, before going into the WWF uh, he joined WCW uh, in 1987 um, he he excelled with the w WCW. Uh, he was managed by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, and a lot of people will say that Bobby Heenan was one of the greatest managers in pro wrestling history. Um, some people will debate that. I know with people like Paul Bear, uh, he's had possibly two of the absolute biggest names in wrestling that he's managed, uh, The Undertaker and Kane, but those are also uh, products of uh, Vince McMahon, um, but Paul Bear really played into the role of manager uh, for those two wrestlers, having the, the persona of uh, these dark entities, uh, this sibling uh, conflict with each other. Now, once Rick Rude went into the WWE, he challenged for the World Championship belt uh, a few times. He never won it. Uh, he eventually left the, WD the WWE in 1991. Uh, he joined WCW again uh, in 1991 and defeated Sting, who is also one of w the WCW's uh, top names. Uh, he held that belt for 378 days. It's actually the second longest reign in um, wrestling titles uh, in a 45 year history. Uh, once he suffered his neck injury in 1992, he was forced to forfeit uh, his WCW International World Heavyweight Championship um, he went on to have major feuds with Jake the Snake Roberts and the Ultimate Warrior and he won the Intercontinental Championship. He's beaten both Jake the Snake as well as the Ultimate Warrior. Because of his neck injury, uh, Rick Rude would collect on insurance but in 1997 he returned to uh, the business of wrestling and 
He actually spent a, uh, a short time with Paul Heyman uh, in ECW. Uh, after that, he would return to the WWE and join up with D-Generation X, including Shawn Michaels uh, and Triple H, as well as China. Uh, he was actually one of the founding members of D-Generation X. Rick Rude never really developed a contract with the WWE. Um, he was more so on the uh, pay per appearance uh, contract, which wasn't even really a contract. But since he wasn't locked into a contract, he chose to jump ship to the WCW, the WCW following uh, the infamous Montreal screw job. This is where it kind of gets a little controversial for uh, Rick Rude um, and his relationship with the WWE. Uh, on November 17th, 1997, Rick Rude returned to the WC the WCW and appeared live on Monday Night Nitro. Uh, he also appeared on Monday Night Raw. Um, basically, within that week, or I, I, I believe that, that same night. Um, technically, it was within the week because um, Monday Night Raw was filmed the week before. Uh, but they both aired on the same night. Uh, he also became a member of the NWO and remained with WCW until March of 1999. Uh, with Rick Rude making that jump from WCW to WWE, um, it is controversial in a sense that Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon were uh, not, not the greatest of friends. There was a big uh, rival um, going on with uh, viewership. Uh, Vince McMahon, Eric Bischoff, as well as uh, Ted Turner. Uh, but it was all in an attempt to get the most views. Uh, and that's where it can be a little problematic for uh, the wrestling business. About a month after Rick Rude left the WCW. He was found unconscious by his wife, Michelle. Um, he was pronounced dead on April 20th, 1999, at the age of 40. Uh, it's related to heart failure, but an autopsy later revealed that he died due to an overdose of mixed medications. Um, some people will say that he was training for an in-ring comeback at the time of his death. Uh, Rick Rude was posthumously inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame despite um, some of the things that he had done while in the WWE and WCW uh, in 2017 by Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Unfortunately, another tragedy would strike the Rude family. Uh, the year before he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, his youngest son, Cody, was killed in a motorcycle accident at the age of 19. Now, his son's grave is actually in Rome, Georgia, which is about, about two hours from here in Roswell. Um, but his wife, Michelle... Uh, will be interred here right next to Rick Rude and we'll take a closer look it says Michelle B. Rude um, now uh, Rick Rude was on a uh, it's easy to say that most wrestlers during the 80s and 90s were on a cocktail of uh, drugs whether it be pain pills steroids um, anything of that nature um, a lot of it is credited due to the ridiculous work schedules. Um, working over 200 days a year, but being on the road for a full 200 days a year. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where you look at and you don't, 
agree with it, but being in the situation of doing that, it's hard to blame them for doing something like that in order to support their family. Uh, wrestling is uh, one of those things that you have to absolutely love to remain in it. Um, which obviously, after having his injury, Rick Rude still loved wrestling um, and he still excelled at it uh, despite not being able to compete. So, um, like I said, a lot of those wrestlers were on something, but you can't really uh, condemn them for doing that because had they not stayed in, uh, possibly the company uh, not treating them like they should be, uh, we see a lot of wrestlers of that era having a lot of major health issues, uh, obviously losing uh, the Ultimate Warrior, um, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and just looking at the unfortunate and sad case of the Von Erich family, one of the uh, probably most cursed families in uh, wrestling history. But despite that, Rick Rude was one of the, like I said, one of the most technical wrestlers to have ever step foot in the ring um, and he excelled on the microphone too he wasn't just a brute he knew how to speak he was very well spoken um, and all time probably one of the greatest wrestlers to come out of the 80s and 90s um, and I'll make the argument that he's much better than most of the wrestlers today. Uh, but no matter what your opinion is, what my opinion is, he was an amazing wrestler. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to see the other places that I've been to, click the link in the description and it'll take you to an interactive map. Uh, if there's any other place you want to see me uh, video, leave a comment in the comment section. But for now, thanks for watching everyone.